Welcome to another behind the scenes video tour from the Lake Superior Railroad Museum downtown Duluth in the St. Louis County Depot. Thank you all for sharing these. Thanks for subscribing to them. Make sure you share and subscribe and like every time a new one of these video tours comes out. Today we're going to talk about creature comforts on the train. I'm by the beautiful Rainier Club car. This was on the North Coast Limited on the Northern Pacific Railway. It was built right at the end of the car maker's art. It was at the height of the production. This car had everything in it, sleeping compartments, air conditioning, individual lights for roomettes. It had just about everything that you could want in creature comfort when traveling on the railroad. But boy, it wasn't like that in the very beginning. The train tracks were rough. The suspension didn't exist. The car jumped and banged and bumped along the tracks. It was a complete unpleasant experience to travel by rail. It was worse in the winter. If you sat near the stove on one end of the car, you roasted. On the other end of the car, you could freeze. So when did it all change? When did rail traffic and travel patterns become more, so we say, something you would like to do instead of something you just had to do? Well, guess who got the creature comforts first? It wasn't in coach, I can tell you that. On board the car Northland, that's where the elites traveled. They weren't back in coach, so that means they got all the creature comforts first. Remember we were talking about in the winter, one end of the car would be roasting hot because it was close to the stove, and the other end would be freezing cold. Well, where else were you going to get heat on a train if not from a furnace or a little pot belly stove on one end of a passenger car? How about from the steam locomotive itself? What they would do is connect these first class cars to the engine through a pipe. Steam would come off of the boiler, through the pipe, into the car, and then radiators would take that hot steam all the way through the car, keeping everybody at the same temperature, much more comfortable. You probably see pictures of trains parked in the station, steam coming from every connection between every car. That's because they were all hooked together on that steam line. Remember the 12-step program we did on the Pullman way to pour a beer the correct way? And we used this little button to call attention to the fact that we wanted a nice cold beer. So, how does that work? It's kind of like upstairs, downstairs. You don't really think that Downton Abbey was the first one to ever come up with an idea for how to call the servants to different parts of the house from the basement when you needed them. No, the railroads had that down. You saw me push the button, right? Well, that button is connected to what's called an enunciator. It's right up there in the servants' quarters, or in this case, in the galley area. So what would happen is the button would be pushed, a light would turn on, a bell would ring, and that would tell the porter in this case where that button was pushed and they would go to that area of the car and provide whatever service was asked of them. The Annunciator. This is the car Masabi. It was built in 1893. It's long before Downton Abbey was ever around, but it had its own creature comforts. Traveling by train was a horribly uncomfortable and kind of dangerous experience. I mean, think about it. You're traveling down the tracks. You got a steam engine that's belching smoke and dirt and dust and cinders. As you're rolling along the railroad, sand is coming up, flying all over. And now it's hot. Well, what do you do? You open the window. And sure, you've got a screen to keep the cinders out. But meanwhile, at 30, 40 miles an hour, which was a revolutionary speed for the day, all this wind is coming at you. Very uncomfortable. You want to keep the window closed. What do you do? you open the Clara story. That's up here. Hook in here, open that window. There's a screen on there, but now you don't have that wind blowing in your face. The Clara story, another creature comfort. Down this uh, wall, we have this. It looks nice, it's got a mirror behind it. This would hold a thermos of ice water. Unfortunately, we don't have the thermos, we're still looking for one, but here you would have ice water revolutionary in the day because you didn't have ice water in coach, I can tell you that. For coach passengers, at night, you just settle back in your seat, usually a hard wooden bench, and try to get some sleep if you can. Ah, but if you're a first class passenger, well, you get your own bed. Bunk beds, but still a bed of your own. Now, these would come together, form a lower bunk. This comes down, forms your upper bunk. But now here's the creature comfort. What if you want to read in bed? One of the first cars to be electrified was this one. It was originally built with acetylene lamp torches, 
But now, look at this. You just push this button, up pops your nightlight. And when you're done reading, you put it away like that. Now the biggest advance in creature comforts were on the railroads first, and now everyone's doing it. We're back at the car Northland. We were just on the car Masabi, which predates the Northland. And we were looking at that thermos of ice water. Ice was a pure luxury back in the day. You didn't have that. So what if you wanted to cool a car and there was no ice and no mechanical refrigeration yet? Well, you kind of improvised. And that's what this is. One of the first air conditioning systems to give creature comfort to people in first class. In here, two tons of block ice. Around that, circulated air and polypropyl. And then as the train was moving down the tracks, that cool air was forced up into the compartment, chilling the car. Was there a thermostat? No, it was either on or off. Two tons of block ice in each compartment meant four tons of ice. That's a lot of ice. We actually used this system once. We had some of our dignitaries associated with different railroads as our guests one time, and it was a hot summer day. You know what's hard to find? A two ton block of ice. So what we did was we got about 110 pound blocks of ice and one by one stuck them in the bunker under the car and then we had air conditioning. Well, now we're back at the Rainier Club car where we started. And look at the advances. All of a sudden, you don't have to put ice under the car. All you have to do is turn on your Waukesha ice machine, which was a fancy name for an air conditioning unit. But because it was originally called ice air conditioning, this was called an ice machine, even though all it did was just make cold air. And that, of course, meant with air conditioning, you didn't have to open the windows anymore. They were sealed. The car was a complete and total self-contained atmospheric pleasure to ride in. And that's how the railroads got more people as passengers when they upped those creature comforts that started for the first class passengers and finally migrated to coach. Don't migrate away, stay with us because more and more we're releasing these behind the scenes video tours and you can tour the Lake Superior Railroad Museum with us. When you see one of these, be sure and subscribe, like it, share it with your friends, neighbors, relatives, and that cranky old guy down at the corner. And then as always, let's take care of each other.